we set ourselves up for the fear of failure because we have expectations of how something should be. We think that if we're okay with our uncomfortable experiences that we're gonna create more of them. It's actually quite the opposite. If we're not okay with them, we create more of them. If we become accepting and self-compassionate and 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 uh, relaxed in the presence of discomfort, that discomfort can dissolve. But it's when we fear the discomfort that it grows. If you're only expectation for success and your only marker for success is how much fun am I having, then how could you fail? Let's begin this gorgeous Dear Gabby episode today with a card from the Universe Has Your Back deck. This this card deck is so meaningful to me. When I wrote my book, The Universe Has Your Back, I was going through a very big personal transformation. I guess I'm always kind of going through a big, no, right now I'm not going through a big tr personal transformation. I'm just feeling really good. As I was writing my book, The Universe Has Your Back, I was going through a, a, a big thing in my life. I had a lot going on. I had uh, a lot of inner work that I needed to do. But what was so beautiful about that was that I was able to channel that transformation and channel that recovery into the book. And so many of the memories I have of writing that book are such a fond memory of being in the mountain house. If you read The Universe Has Your Back, you know, being in the mountain house and feeling the presence of, of my mentor, Dr. Wayne Dyer, standing over my desk as I was finishing the chapter all about him and his connection to me. And so as I pull out this deck right now, it's just uh, giving me this moment of opportunity to remember the beautiful experience I had writing that book. And I know that when we are healed by the work that we put forth, it has the capacity to help heal others. And so when I think about that writing journey, it was one of the most healing times of my life. And creative practices can absolutely be some of the greatest tools for healing. So that's a message before we even begin. If you're going through anything difficult at this time and you want to spark a healing through your own personal growth and development, begin a creative practice of any kind. Write, dance, move in any way. It's very healing to be in the creative force of the energy of the universe, the energy of love. Here we are. Let's pick a card from the universe has your back deck, my friends. This is what will open our show and it often becomes the theme of our show as we begin today. Here it is. I choose love no matter what. I choose love no matter what. I'll take that. I'll take that. I choose love no matter what. Let me speak to what this means to me. When we make the devotional commitment to lean towards love, see our circumstances through the lens of love, then we start to experience our experiences differently. It's not that the world around us changes. It's that our perception of our experience changes. And in that shift in perception, as A Course in Miracles teaches, it's a miracle. The simple shift in perception is a miracle because you've chosen to release the wrong-minded thoughts of fear and lean into the right-minded beliefs of love. And as we get grounded in the beliefs and thoughts of love, we remember our true nature, our true nature, which is to feel good, our true nature, which is to be kind, our true nature, which is to be compassionate, forgiving, and at ease. Our truest nature is peace. It's gratitude, confidence, joy. And we've built up all of these barriers against the presence of that love. Being here on this show today, listening to me wherever you are in the world, watching the video wherever you are in the world, means that there is a part of you that is willing to lean towards love. It means that there's a part of you that is ready to see the world through a lens far better than the one that we've been holding on to, far better than the fear and the negativity and the judgment and the attack. And I really wanna to speak to this. You know, I'm seeing so much negativity and judgment out there on the internet and in the comments and the feed. And 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 I'm, I'm, I have a huge boundary up for that. It's, to, it's like that negativity 
is is merely a reflection of some individuals deep deep rooted disconnect from love and so if you have those moments where you feel triggered and you want to fight someone or you feel like you want to push back on social media or you want to be negative to a, a, a family member or you want to uh, defend against something remember this in my defenselessness my safety lies it's one of my favorite messages from the course in my defenselessness my safety lies when we stop defending against the fear-based illusions of the world then we start to feel free we become free and it's in that freedom that we start to open up to the capacity to witness the love that is within us around us and guiding us so that's our message today my friends our message today is i choose love no matter what I choose love no matter what. Let me see if you can see that perfectly. I choose love no matter what. It's a light card. It's hard to see. There you go. Ah, I love this show. I've been really thinking about you guys a lot lately and thinking about what people are going through and thinking about some of the struggles that people are having. And I want this show to be a place for you all to feel a great sense of connection, even if you're listening on your own you can still feel like you're part of something and connected to something and connected to a community and connected to a movement that's occurring around us and and supporting all of us as we as we move into this new phase of dear gabby all right team we are ready i'm ready for you we can bring people in hello patrick is that your name patrick yes hi gabby what's up baby how you doing Oh my God, I wasn't expecting this. It's so good to see you. It's so good to see you. Where are you in the world? Uh, I live uh, not too far from you, actually. I live just outside of Providence, Rhode Island, actually. A couple hour drive, so. Right on, man. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh my God, I've been following you for years. Oh my God, it's so good to see you. So good to I'm see like you. getting chills right now. Um, oh my God. Um, I wasn't expecting this. I'm sorry. I um, next Tuesday we'll have ten months sober. Patrick, <sighs> babe, wow, you're almost ten months clean, man. That's such a major, major, major thing. I'm so proud to hear that. I've been trying to for a long time, and I finally hit bottom last year, and I'm very grateful. And I've been following you throughout the whole process, of course, and a lot of your guidance has kept me going. I've done it all through uh, uh, 12 step. Um, I never was uh, went through any rehab or anything like that. I probably would have benefited from some sort of detox, but. Um, One thing, Patrick, I want to get the audio so people can hear you. Can you hear me? Go ahead. So you're, you were saying that you went to you did not go to rehab? No, I just, it was um, just through AA. I basically was just like, if I keep going the way that I'm going, I'm probably not gonna be around much longer. And one of the things that I remembered was uh, from your TED talk quite a few years ago when you shared about how I had just woken up from a worst hangover in my life and I heard you saying, uh, God, universe, whoever is out there, I need a miracle. And I heard you saying that. And I was like, this might be time because I've tried numerous times before with no mm. success. Mm -hmm. And um, after a few hiccups, I got sober of May 16th of last year, right in the middle of the pandemic. The fear was just increasing my anxiety and the drinking was just falling out of control. And um, I have uh, gone through all the... 12 steps and I'm making my amends. My life is far better than I can ever imagine. And um, I'm just a little, I'm kind of at like an inflection point in my life now. Um, it's become clear that there are other forms of addiction that have taken form in my life that I need to address. And the next uh, addiction is actually sex mm -hmm. and love. And so I've att started attending that fellowship and I do have Good. a sponsor with that fellowship and uh, we're beginning step work. Um, and so there's a lot of shame and trauma behind sex. I will say I am a survivor of assault. And, um, that became clear right after I got sober. Mm. So there's a lot of shame and there's a lot of trauma, mm -hmm. um, 
from growing up as a gay man that I haven't really ad- addressed mm-hmm. in my life. And I'm starting to address that now with a therapist and it's all like front and center. Yeah. And it's all there. And it's like, you know, today I'm feeling fine, but the last few weeks, so almost a month, it's been a lot of fear, a lot of pain. And yeah. I feel like now that I know that what I need to heal, what I need to address, I'm on a wait list for trauma therapy right now. Good. What do I do? Where do I go? How do I move? You know what I mean? Like I'm talking just, to like, the right girl, baby. The universe you has so your much. back. I love you, Patrick. And the universe truly has your back, my friend, because literally you just told me my story. You just told me my story. You, you getting clean and sober was the first step to recognizing the reason why you used in the first place because of sexual assault is the words that you used. Your grappling with shame, which is the, the the fact that you can even say the word shame 10 months into your recovery, identify the shame around the wound is, is massive. It's massive. For I was clean and sober for at least a decade before I even realized I had any shame. I want to really make a moment to just acknowledge your sobriety, acknowledge your bravery, acknowledge your willingness to heal from trauma and the recognition that the root cause of your addiction was the traumatic events. God bless you. Congratulations for that. That's absolutely magnificent. Now, I also want to give you some resources and tools so that while you're going through this recovery process and the journey of touching into the trauma, which is terrifying and can be super triggering. And in some cases, we want to make sure that's, let's start to pray for the therapist that's going to be at the highest and best for you, because that is absolutely out there and available to you. It's coming your way. You said the prayer by saying, I put myself on a wait list for trauma recovery. So you've pretty much put it out to the universe. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I, I want to give you some tools to help continue to regulate your energy and your nervous system as you begin to go deeper into the healing process because healing from trauma, healing from addiction is eventually going to be healing trauma because behind all addiction is a energetic disturbance and a experience that we've been trying to anesthetize. So here you are very early in your sober recovery, recognizing the root cause of trauma and showing up for it. You have a beautiful life ahead of you. I can promise you that mark my words, stay clean and you will live a life beyond your wildest dreams, but it's not just stay clean. It's stay clean and do the work. So you said you've done the 12 steps in less than a year. You are now on the next path. So I want to be here as a, I want you to visualize me almost as like, um, you know, when people are like about to do a trust fall and they're, they know that they're going to trust, yeah. fall, they know that they're going to land in like a, you know, soft cushion or like a something bouncy, right? Yeah. So you're not going to fall on your face. I want to be whatever it is that you visualize yourself landing on. I can be there to support you and hold you in this because you're literally doing a trust fall right now. You're saying universe, take me, show me how to heal. I'm going to open up. I'm going to put myself on a wait list for a trauma therapist. I'm going to go for it. Major, major, major. Me, So here are some, some self-regulating tools that I want you to use. There are going to be times in your trauma recovery where you don't feel safe straight up, man. As you start to remember or recall or feel things, there will be feelings of not being safe. Here's something that I used day in and day out throughout my, uh, early days of remembering the trauma. And if it sounds like you remembered it, is that correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's terrifying. And I, I'm, I'm with you. I know I, I lived through that. So what I used was this tapping tool where I tap on this point between the ring finger and the pointer finger. And in EFT, emotional freedom technique, this is called the gamut point. I call it the holy shit point. This is when the, you know, what is hitting the fan. You, you're freaking out something's up. You just had a therapy session that triggered you. You just saw someone that triggered you. You're feeling it. You're in it. You don't want to get stuck in it. You just start to tap on this point. It's right between you and everybody watching and listening can tap here to borrow the benefits. It's right between the ring finger and the pinky finger. And it's that little meaty part of your hand. Yes. Gorgeous. Thank you. And you tap, tap, tap. And I want you to repeat with me, Patrick. I am safe. I'm safe. Deep breath. I am safe. I am safe. Another deep breath. I am safe. 
I am safe. I am safe. I am safe. I want you to smile and just remember I'm, you've got Gabby. You can trust fall into Gabby. <laughs> I am safe. 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 And one more deep breath with I am safe. I am safe. Okay, take another deep breath and just relax for a moment. This is a tool for your toolbox, baby, because like I said, there's going to be moments where you're activated. So I want you to turn right to that gamut point, tap, tap, tap. I am safe. I am safe. I am safe. This is one. Okay. The next one is a head hold. This is really helpful. You can lie down on your back. You can relax back in your chair. I want you to place your right hand on your heart and your left hand on your forehead. And I want you to breathe long and deep. This is just a safety hold. It puts you into a place of safety. Left hand on your head, right hand on your heart, and just breathing and breathing and breathing. Just being in the presence of all that's happening around you and all the great recovery and all the great work that you're doing. And about, I would say, before you go to bed at night, do that head hold for a few, few minutes of just deep breath with that head hold right before bed really gorgeous way to go to sleep. I always go to sleep with my hand on my belly, my hand on my chest. Or if you wake up in the morning or the middle of the night, you can go right back to that hold, long, deep breath. And when you inhale deeply and exhale completely, you're really, you're really telling your nervous system, okay, let's settle. Let's calm down. Those are two tools I wanted to give you to feel safe. So as you take this trust fall in life, as you step into your recovery, you're so young. How old, how old are you, sweetheart? 26. Yeah, baby. I got sober 25 too. Look I at was us. 25. Our yeah. stories are so similar. I, oh my goodness, love you. I love you. I, I, one of the deepest things for me when I give talks around the world and I meet people are the people that come to me and tell me that they got clean. Cause it's just, it's, it's, it's hard and it's brave. And when you get sober, one of the, it's not, it's not as hard to get sober as it is to stay sober and do the work and look at the reasons why we were using in the first place. Brave, brave, brave work. This is for you, Patrick. Ha, huh. are you fucking kidding me? Listen to this, Patrick. My faith has the power to turn trauma into healing, conflict into growth, and fear into love. <laughs> what the fuck? I love Oh my God, that's amazing. I'm sorry. Uh, I love it. Oh my God, people, you can't make it up. My faith has the power to turn trauma into healing, conflict into growth, and, fa and fear into love. That's your card, my soup friend. That's your card. So I already meditate daily and tap daily. Do you re recommend using these tools in addition to what I'm already doing? Yeah, I want you to um, use that gamut point, tapping, 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 whenever you feel unsafe. I want you to use the head hold whenever you feel unsafe, okay? Because trauma recovery is about coming back to safety. Peter Levine says that, and he, Peter Levine started somatic experiencing, which is something you may want to look into beautiful work, Awakening the Tiger. Uh, he's written countless books that I would highly recommend. One thing that he says about trauma is it's the inability to be present because we're in this constant state of hypervigilance because we did not feel safe then. And that, that repetitive fight, flight, freeze response is happening whenever we're triggered, but often for many people who have suffered from trauma all day long. So the feeling of safety is sort of a uncommon feeling for someone who has been traumatized. And so I want you to use those tools to start to get to a sensation of what safety is and how to feel that safety. You got it? I got it. Thank you for talking to uh, me. Thank you for holding space for me. I'm so proud of you. And I really hope to stay connected to you through your recovery journey. And at any point in your life, whether it's God, God forbid at any point in your life where you think you might want to pick up, I want you to hear my voice in the back of your mind saying, stay clean and you will live a life beyond your wildest dreams. I want you to hear my voice. Okay. I will be there as you as you trust fall. Okay, baby. Thank you. You're so beautiful. So good to see you. <laughs> I love you. I love you, baby. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you for your time. Thank You're everybody. Welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. What a beauty, guys. What a beauty. Oh my God, Patrick. I like picking cards for you guys because that just, it's how wild was that? Oh my goodness. I'm ready for the next one, guys. I 
I hope you're enjoying this show. And if you want to get more Gabby, you can click the link below, subscribe to my Dear Gabby podcast on Apple, be the first to know when the episodes drop because they come out one week before the video. And you can download it to your phone, listen to it while you're driving, while you're cooking, while you're working out. You can just get more Gabby wherever you are. And if you feel called, leave a review. I'd love to hear from you. Now let's get back to this episode. Oh my God. Hi, Gabby. I can't believe it. Oh my goodness. Are you excited to be here? Yes, I've been following you since I actually saw you on Jay Shetty's show. And that's, it was near when you were launching Universe Has Your Back. Oh, a long time ago. Wow. Yeah, so I've been following you since then. And it's been a massive part of my um, recovery during anxiety and had like a really bad episode back then. So it's really served me so well. Good. Good. Yeah. Where are you, (laughs) Shandi? Yeah, Shandi? Yeah, yeah, Shandi, yeah. Where are you in the world, my love? I'm based in London, UK. Awesome. We have so many Brits that come onto this show. So yeah, I've been seeing my fellow Brits there, so I was hoping my turn would be soon. <laughs> Here it is. Here's your time, baby. How can oh I help my- you? Um, Gabby, I feel like a bit triggered um, because of the whole lockdown situation here. And I feel like when I spend too much time at home, it reminds me of the, that episode I had all those years ago where... Um, I wasn't really able to leave my home surrounding because that's the only place that felt safe for me. Okay. And like right now, even um, I am back to work. I am a teacher. So I feel okay about that. But it's like I'm constantly worrying. Like I'm worrying whether like something will happen when I'm on my way home or on my way there to work. And I just can't let that go. I feel like I'm really struggling with that space. Okay. Well, let's start, Shandi, with a lot of love and self-compassion and recognition that feeling unsafe right now is a normal condition. It's a real normal condition. Okay, so let's just have a conversation with the part of you that feels unsafe and just let, let's just let her know that she is so seen and heard and that she's not alone. In some way or another, everyone has feelings of unsafety given the circumstances. And as we start to slowly have the experience of coming out of this through the vaccine being widely spread and and some people taking on the opportunity to adjust their experience, which is sooner and sooner and closer and closer in your country and in mine, that fear may not just go away, right? We may all be, we have, may have herd immunity in a few months, but it still will be there because we've lived through a traumatic event. And so any traumas from the past are going to indeed be reactivated at this time without a shadow of a doubt. So let's start at the baseline of self-acceptance and self-love and self-recognition that I feel, I feel unsafe. Okay. I've been feeling unsafe. Because Shanti, what, sometimes what happens is when we start to judge our feelings, we actually perpetuate them. So if you're in the place of like, oh, I shouldn't be going back there because that's where I was seven years ago, or I don't want to be in that place. I'm scared that it's going to, that anxiety about the past perpetuates it and brings it into the present. And it's not that it's actually bringing that exact same experience. It's bringing the feeling of that experience into the present moment. And so that's what the the ego, the fear mind loves to do. It loves to take those past stories, reinterpret them in the present moment, and then project them onto the future. But if you can just be in the presence of, okay, that's where I'm at right now. We're living in a pandemic. How could I not be scared? Normalizing it, accepting it, being okay with where you're at and what is up. That step alone, baby, I'll give you more, but that step alone can diffuse it. It's about, we saw our card today was I choose to see through love. If you look at these circumstances of fear that you're living through and you choose to see it through the lens of love, 
then you could really look at yourself as if this, as this innocent person who's had this experience with the rest of the world that's been scary and say, yeah, that was freaking scary. It, it's still kind of scary. And that's, and that's where I'm at right now. And that's okay. Being, we, we get this wrong. We think that if we're okay with our uncomfortable experiences that we're gonna create more of them, it's actually quite the opposite. If we're not okay with them, we create more of them. If we become accepting and self-compassionate and, and, and uh, relaxed in the presence of discomfort, that discomfort can dissolve. But it's when we fear the discomfort that it grows. Yes. You yes. got me? Yes. I just can't create that distance between that feeling of the old trauma entering that future self. It's that I want yeah. you to you I want you to do a practice of speaking to that scared self, okay? And I want you to literally say things to her like that experience from that past is not actually what's happening right now. Okay. And I want you to remind yourself every day, I am safe right now. I am going to work right now. More and more people are getting vaccinated right now. Things are getting more and more clear. My country is doing a good job. I am now, I'm, I'm safe in my home. I can always walk outside. I have the ability to be safe in my home and also walk out when I want to. And just continue to guide yourself into the present moment, into the present moment of what is okay right now, what is safe right now, because the ego mind, the fear mind wants to go right back to that story and drag it into this moment and project it onto the future and just make it this thing that it's not. And it's not. I want you to normalize it. I want you to accept where you're at. This is a difficult time. I realize that I'm accepting of that, but I don't have to judge that. Yeah, I am very judgmental of myself. You really, yeah, you hit the nail on the head. I definitely, like just earlier, for example, my old self used to panic in traffic and things where I don't like being at a standstill in any public space. So just earlier, I was being driven back from work and I started feeling that panic again in that traffic right. and on those sort of roads that I used to panic on. So that's where I'm getting more and more anxious. When you need, when you feel panic, I want you to tap on that gamut point. Like I gave to Patrick, tap, yeah. tap, tap. I am safe. I'm doing it right now as you speak. Yeah. I am safe. 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 And this is for everybody, everybody watching the people on Instagram, watching this recorded live, the people on zoom, I am safe. I am safe. When we have, uh, these experiences of fear, they can manifest when we feel out of control. So I would get that I used to have yes. panic attacks in elevators. This saved me in those elevators. I, I would walk up like 20 flights of stairs because I was scared to get in the elevator. Not because I, I would literally, yeah, you got me. But you don't have to live like that. I am safe. I am safe. I'm safe. Use the head hold, breathe. Here's another, another technique that we're going to build onto this whole practice here on Dear Gabby today. Yes. The next technique is a breath practice for re regulating anxiety and regulating your nervous system. And Shandi, I'm just gonna, um, as we do it, I'm just gonna have you mute yourself so that we don't get the extra sound, okay? So here's how it goes. We <clears throat> breathe in for two strokes quickly and out for one long stroke. And on the inhale, your diaphragm extends and on the exhale, your diaphragm relaxes. So you can place your hand on your diaphragm and we're gonna breathe in and then out one long stroke. In for two, out one long stroke. In for two, out one long stroke out. In for two, out for one. In for two, out for one. In for two out for one. How does that feel, Shanti? How did that feel for you? You have to unmute yourself so I can hear you again. I'm sorry. <laughs> and you're still on mute. <laughs> oh, sorry, that, that was, that's okay. How did that feel for you, baby? I just feel like I released something there because the tears started coming out of my eyes. So I feel like it was... <laughs> 
it means a lot Gabby you've like, you, I'm a miracle member and the stuff that I've like you've helped me in my darkest times I really it means so much to me like before I came on live with you I was in that space that scared space so it feels like a sign to me right now that I've been able yes. to see Oh yes. Oh yes. This is 100% a sign that you are being guided right now to, to safety. You have your miracle membership. So you have years of resources and tools that you can return to whenever you want. And you've got me by your side right now. Okay, baby. It means so much. You're welcome, you. sweetheart. You can use these tools whenever you need them. Okay, babe. Beautiful. Gabby, you know, with the two-stroke breathing, is that to release trauma or is it more to do with just... Well, here's the deal. All breath work can help if you are a traumatized individual because it can help regulate the fight-flight response. So when you live with, a, uh, with PTSD or you've had an experience of trauma in the past, you live in a place of hypervigilance, you are constantly on alert, uh, you're, you're uh, often in the allostatic load of just stress yeah. beyond where it should be. And so using any kind of breath practice can be the most regulating way to just bring, it, bring yourself back to baseline. Uh, and it's a great tool to use for safety. It's a great tool to use while you're doing other therapeutic practices and being part of the miracle membership and going further on your therapeutic journey. And uh, it's a way of getting back into your body because typically traumatized individuals are disembodied. We've yeah. lived for decades not feeling like we're in our own space. And so that's, you know, that's the value of this. That means a lot to me because in those moments I get so stuck and I freeze that I forget to breathe almost. Yep, I got you, I understand. Yeah, you literally said something quite profound. I get so stuck that I freeze. So when we've experienced trauma, we have fight, flight, or freeze. And so the freeze response is that I can't get out. And it was an, the inability yes. to run, to yes. flee. Yes. And so that is explaining why you're afraid of being stuck in specific vehicles or in any form. So my love, I am not a trauma therapist, but I am a human who has lived through the recovery of my own trauma. My best advice to you is to seek out a somatic experiencing therapist, someone mm -hmm. who can help you get unstuck. Mm. Okay, baby. Thank you so much, Gabby. It means a lot. Oh, hi. What's your name, baby? Hello, you're on Dear Gabby. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I didn't realize I was on. <laughs> Hi, honey. How are you? Good, good. Um, I just want to thank you for your service um, and what you do. Uh, I've read a couple of your books and they've been very helpful. Um, my quick question to you is that um, the last little while I've been trying to do things for myself and with my career and um, with uh, relationships. So I've stopped a relationship. It's been very hard. Um, I've been trying to, you know, kind of cut the ties for the past um, year and a half. Um, but my main question is, I'm working on my career right now, doing courses, and I have this fear every time I do an exam. So I've been meditating, I've been, I felt like I've been doing the work to try and get over my fear, but mm -hmm. it's just like, it's like a fear of failing. Okay. So right. I just, I don't know how to get over it. So here's, so when we talk about failure, often we have this, we set ourselves up for the fear of failure because we have expectations of how something should be. But if our only expectation could be to have a good time, and I mean this, even when you're taking a test, even when you're doing a chore, even when, even when, even when, if your only expectation for success and your only marker for success is how much fun am I having, then how could you fail? As long as you had fun. Mm -hmm. So when you go in for that test, 
I want you to get excited and ex- you know, I've really been studying for this, this, bring it on. Let's have some fun. I want you to make, bring a nice coffee with you and sit down to the, to the exam and just take in the vibes and say a prayer before you start and smile along the way and enjoy the fact that you know what you're doing. And when you don't know, just be like, okay, I'll figure that one out next time. And if you walk out of that exam, having enjoyed the process, then you can know that you've succeeded. Yes. Cause it seems that every time, like I, I'm looking at like, if I have a challenging question that I know I'm difficult with, I'm having difficult with, I'm like, okay, this is my favorite question. Exactly. I love doing these. Exactly. Make okay. the challenges exciting. If, if you are, if anyone that's listening or watching out there is, is experiencing a fear of failure, the fastest way out is to stop focusing on an outcome and start focusing on how much fun you can have. Because as, as long as you're focusing on fun that, and that, that success equals fun and your only job is to have a good time, then there's no way you can fail. Okay. No way you can fail. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Just uh, one more quick thing. Um, when it comes to the relationship coming back and forth, I know that I'm not, I'm not growing in the, rela- in, in the relationship, the past relationship. So how do I let that person go without feeling the guilt? Radical honesty. Okay. The, the, the greatest gift that I experienced from COVID is that I no longer have tolerance for bullshit. No. And I don't have tolerance for, for, for people that are not high vibe. I don't have tolerance for things that are not working. I'm just like, let me tell you the truth about what's up and we can resolve it if you're willing. And if you're not, no problem. I got to move on. Okay. And so it's not about being rude. It's not about being negative. It's not about being mean. The kindest mm-hmm. thing you can do for somebody is tell them the truth. Yes. Cause I've been nothing but honest and, and, um, we're not in an, uh, like an, actual relationship we just spend time together and you know I've tried to cut off so many times and then I feel like they're trying to convince me to still have some kind of connection when I know it's not I the truth I'm- will set you free just tell the truth okay I, I this isn't going to work for me if you want to be my friend you can be my friend if you don't want to be my friend then let's just cut the ties can't okay. can't one or the other okay baby thank, thank you so much clarity Gabby. people clarity people clarity people you got me yeah. Girlfriend. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you. Thank you. You're it, so it's, beautiful. Thank it's you. Been a, it's been a pleasure. I was like, I need to get on the show. I need to get on the show and talk to her. Thank you so much. Lots you were meant to be here. Thank you guys. Thank, thank you. you. So our show today has all been about leaning towards love, seeing through the lens of love. I think that was a very clear through line that we've had. We saw with Patrick, we saw how he really has this beautiful opportunity to grow and to take that trust fall. And as long as he does it through the lens of love, he will be safe. He will be cared for. He will be watched over. We saw that with our with our friend who just came through, Jenna, who was talking about the fear of failure. Well, really the simplicity of choosing to see through the lens of love by deciding to let go of the outcomes and only focus on success being fun is going to give her that incredible shift in her perception, the miraculous change that we're all looking for. And so the through line of this show today is to proactively, consciously guide our thoughts back to love, guide our thoughts back to love through breath, guide our thoughts back to love through honoring our feelings for 90 seconds, guide our thoughts back to love through the releasing of expectations and grounding in the truth of our only expectation should be to have some fun and to give ourselves permission to be present in this moment. One big theme I noticed in so many of these Dear Gabby's was people coming on expressing the fear of the future or the fear of the past. That is the ego fear-based belief system strangling you all. And the quickest way out is to return to love. 
the quickest way out is to return to love through that heart hold or that head hold. The quickest way out is to return to love through the tapping on the gamut point. The quickest way out is to remind yourself that you're safe. The quickest way out is to breathe into that presence of that feeling for 90 seconds and release it. And the quickest way out is to just focus on the fun. If you can have fun in the present moment, fun cannot coexist with fear. And so if you give yourself full permission to get grounded in joy for 20 minutes, you can guide yourself back towards love. That is a key through line here on the show, dear Gabby, is lean towards love and you will be led. Lean towards joy and you will be led. Lean towards the feelings and the presence of that extreme self-care and compassion and you can dissolve all boundaries with love. So thank you guys so much for being with me today. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody. Thank you for being on Dear Gabby. Beautiful show, so good. If you like this video and you wanna get more Gabby, check out the next one right over here.